Hello, everybody. This is from Milwaukee to Nashville. I'm Daniel Goodemo. Over there, we have John Lewandowski. Our show is brought to you by the wonderful folks at Hockey Locker, 202 West Hart Avenue, Milwaukee, Wisconsin. You can call them at 414-800-7585 or visit their website at hockeylockermilwaukee.com. Right now, you can buy Admiral's season tickets, half season, full flex plans, 20 games, 10 games. Uh, 20 games, you'll get about the same amount of tickets as a half, and I think half is actually cheaper. And you can move around your tickets, pick your seats. Um, if COVID ever lets up, they may even take let you see the seat you want to sit in if COVID lets up. Doesn't look likely, but let's not get into that. Today, the National Predators took on NBC, I mean the Blackhawks. <laughs> Don't get me started on that. That is our next video. Um, they have been basically, in the words of Stone Cold, stomping a mud hole in Chicago all season. Yeah, they have. And in this sense, they were doing it again till the third when they watched their ratings go. <laughs> Literally, I was watching the rate, the live ratings. In the third, right when they scored, the ratings started dropping. Yeah. Oh, wow. So, personal opinion, that was a rating to grab. It's kind of odd that when your ratings start to drop, the team that you support the most went and scores a goal and the ratings go back up. And they score again, the ratings go up more. And then you go to OT and the ratings go up more. Let me not get into that. It's a mess. Makes the NHL look scripted. But it's mostly NBC. If you actually watch any other game outside of NBC, you'll see what you, you'll see it. Um there's currently another game going on on NBC right now, and that is yeah. uh, Sharks and Knights. Yeah, if the Knights get even a point, they clinch. At least that's according to NBC. Yep, that sounds about right. They get two points, they clinch the division, which is kind of odd, be it that they're almost tied. Right. But, hey, who am I to judge? All right, stats in this game were 40 to 30 in shots for Nashville. Faceoffs were 58 42. Nashville. Nashville was 0 for 2. Chicago was 0 for 4 on the power play. Nashville had eight minutes in the penalty box. Chicago four. Uh hits were 36 29 in favor of in favor of Nashville. Blocks were 22 to 13 in favor of Nashville. A lot of good blocks tonight, man. There really were. Uh, 13 giveaways to 11. That's pretty even. I mean, um, Nashville had one, two, three, four, wait, two, four, six, eight, ten, eleven get takeaways. So every giveaway they got, they took the puck away. Now, every giveaway came on the defensive side. Ellis had three, Banning had one, Ekholm had three, Harper had one, uh, Gabranson had one, and uh, Yossi had two. Only forwards to have one were Halla and Yarncroc. Uh, scoring. Scoring in the first was Pius Suter, his 13th, was an assist from uh, Bre uh, from Hagel, his 11th. Um, then also in the first was Illy Tolvin, and welcome back, by the way. Yeah, welcome first. back. So tomorrow, Illy Tolvin, look at from Milwaukee to Nashville. There will be a photo. It'll happen. I don't know mm -hmm. how, but we'll make it happen. Um... Uh, then we have the assist going to Arvidsson to 15th and Johansson is 13th. Um, then we had uh, in the second, Colton Sisson scored his eighth with unassisted. Uh, then scoring his 12th was Mikel Granlin with an assist from Ekholm. 
That was also in the second. Then in the third, Luke Coonan scored his sixth with an assist from Granlund, his tenth, and Yossi, his 23rd. Um, uh, then we had uh, Wyatt Kalnuk scoring his third with an assist from Kane, his 43rd, and Hagel, his 12th. Then Vinny Hittestrosa scored his first all year with an assist from Kirby Dock, his fifth, and Zadorov, his seventh. Double Kubelik scored his 15th with an assist from Sooner. And we go to OT where Brandon Hagel scored his seventh with an assist from Hittestrosa, his sixth, and Dock, his sixth. Um, let's be real here. Why? Kyle Knox's goal was not Saros' fault, Sid and Dominic Kubelik's goal was not Saros' fault. No, it wasn't. The OT goal was his fault. But then again, when you have three lapses, on, well, nope, that makes it not his fault. We have three lapses on the defensive side of three-on-three three hockey. Oh, yeah, you lapsed on every side of the puck. Yeah, that's not good. No. <laughs> uh, Saros stopped uh, 25 of 30 with a 0.833 save percentage. That is his worst since February 15th. Long stretch. Um, and in net for the Blackhawks was N N uh, NBCSN's golden boy, Malcolm Subban. Uh, he stopped 36 of 40 with a 0. 0.900 save percentage. Now, hear me when I say this. That is a really good night for him. Yeah. Not taking that away from him. But what I am saying is when you are on national TV broadcast and you are supposed to be unbiased, if I have to hear about the goalie from the other team in our when the other team's in the offensive zone and you're not calling the play and all you're doing is hyping them up, that's going to make you hate them. See, that's the thing. When you have stuff like this, that makes fans not want to watch. I almost didn't even watch this game because I hate NBC's coverage that much. I will not watch NBC's coverage anymore. I don't care if we're on it. NBCSN will not get my coverage ever again. And NBC, I don't care if it goes to USA, won't get it either. It's not going to change anything. Because they're moving the NHL to USA because NBCSN is gone. Right. As of the end of hockey season. Actually, at the end of May. Or beginning of May. So whatever right. they had programmed, you guys better hope WWE can uh, move their schedule around a little bit because... Uh, whatever N NBC had planned, they're killing it May 1st. Right. So, have fun. <laughs> uh, your referees were Francois, Laurent, and Chris Lee. Linesmen were Dan Kelly and Devin Berg. Uh, head coach for Nashville's John Hines. Head coach for Chicago's Jeremy Collington. Uh, scratches for Nashville were David Ferris, Rocco Grimaldi, Jeremy Davies, and Dante Fabro. Uh, scratches for Chicago were Adam Gaudet, Dylan Strom, uh, Colin Delia, and Mike Hardman. Uh, today, Nashville announced the signing of Mark Delgazio. Oh, that was yesterday, actually. But we took a camera day off yesterday. Yeah. So, that being said, Mark Delgazio won the NCAA tournament. Just a week ago. Yeah. Or a couple weeks ago. Um, he played for UMass. He entered a three-year entry-level deal. Uh, according to CBS Pro Sports, it is a three-year um, $725,000 contract, which is very minimal. Right. Um, okay. I don't know. I like the signing. I think it's a good signing for them. I think at this point, after this season, ooh, 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 
I'm cleaning house. If we don't make the playoffs, I'm cleaning house. Because with the way they were playing, they should have. Right. If they don't make it, clean house. If they do, some guys can stay, some guys got to go. I'm going to tell you one right now. Matt Duchesne's a bust in Nashville. An $8 million bust. At least Johansson's putting up numbers. Duchesne has four goals, three assists, seven points. Since, sorry, guys. I have to be a little unprofessional here. Um, since my computer wants to not respond to me right now. <laughs> Uh -huh. Um, players with more points than Duchesne. Nick Cousins, Ryan Johansson, Luke Cunnan, Eric Holla, Matthias Ekholm, Roman Yossi, Colton Sissons, uh, Rocco Grimaldi, uh, Illy Tolvin, and Victor Arvidsson, uh, Mikhail Granlund, Phil Forsberg, and Cali Arkrock. Wow. Tied with him. Actually, I should say that. Everybody from Luke Coonan up had more. Tied with him is Yakov Trenin, Nick Cousins, and Ryan Johansson. Now, Johansson missed a month and a half. Uh, he has, oh, sorry, that's gold. Well, I want points. Why are they doing this to me? All right, points. There we go. Players with more points than Duchesne are Dante Fabro, Ryan Ellis, Colton Sissons, Rocco Grimaldi, Nick Cousins, Luke Coonan, Eric Halla, Ryan Johansson, Matthias Eckholm, Ellie Tovenen, basically half the dang roster. Okay. Player tied with him is Yakov Trent, and you are tied with a rookie. Guess what? Behind him, only two points behind him is Ben Harper, one, and, three point, and four points behind him is Matthew Olivier. You have a goon four points behind you. Right. So, I mean, it's it's frustrating. Tanner Janot is only five points back. Oh, wow. And he's played in seven NHL games and done more than you. Have in two seasons. To light a spark under this team. You are a veteran, and the young guys are out playing you. You are a $8 million bust. I hate feeling that way about guys. But facts are facts, stats are stats, and when that stuff happens, it happens. You know, when it all comes down to it, when you're out there, they lose more than they win. Right. When you're not out there, they win more than they lose. That says something about the team. This says something about what you can't give them that the other younger guy or whoever's replacing you can. Yeah. yeah. And and for the most part, it looks like effort. He just doesn't have the effort. He's like, I got my money. What do I need to do? Doesn't matter if I stay here. I got to live in Nashville for two years now. I mean... Be all end all of it is, is if you keep going the route you're going with him and you keep him sticking him around. I mean, he's got to prove something here and he has nine games, nine games to get into the top 10 in points. And in order to do that, he'd have to get. So he has nine to get into the top ten. He has to get six points, and that's not including if guys around him get more points. Right. If you're getting paid eight million. You should be in the top ten of your team's points unless you're a goalie. Right. Which in mean that point, if you're getting paid nine million to be a goalie, you better be in the top ten in the league. In oh yeah. Points. Uh, Carey Price. Carey Price is the highest paid NHL goalie. He's getting paid nine million. So K 
Can't hear you. No. I had to mute you for a second. I got something going on over here. All righty. Well, that has been our show today. We apologize for the lackluster enthusiasm here. Yeah. But we just gave Dallas an even number to chase with three games in hand. Right. And uh, it's going to be tough. Um, looking at the hindsight of everything, if you can't get out from under Duchesne's contract, maybe you can find somebody, uh, you can pay the other, give two players $4 million a piece to come right. in. And, uh, you can give two players $4 million a piece and get a solid hockey player. Right. You know, you can get a solid defenseman for $4 million. You can get a solid goaltender for $4 million. Yeah, you can. <laughs> Most stud goalies only take five. She have a season. Okay. So, all righty. Yeah. This has been from Milwaukee to Nashville. We'll see you guys Friday. I will chat with you guys later. Thanks. So.